You're listening to Sarah Hagen Backstage, with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick, both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen Backstage. My guest today, Pat Petrillo, is well known for his popular instructional videos on Drumeo.com and his DVDs and books with Hudson Music. He is also a really fantastic educator and he has a brand new album out called The Power Station Sessions. So come along with me as I catch up with Pat Petrillo. Pat, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Sarah. How's it going? Great. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. Busy, you know, juggling a few things, but uh, yes. things are going really good. I'm things excited. are going really, yeah. really good for you. Um, you just launched a new album. You just released, I should say, a new album. Oh, you mean this? Yeah, <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, Power Station Sessions, and yes. your band is the Pat Petrillo Big Rhythm Band, which yeah. is really kind of the perfect name for you all. It's mm. perfect. Yeah, so it's a, good. it's a quite a variety of grooves. You know, it's, it's like a lot of people ask me, why did you, you know, start this band, and why are you doing that, and why the Big Rhythm? Because it's just a lot of, it's a multitude of rhythms. It's a veritable potpourri. <laughs> <laughs> and no, but I mean, I, it's all the styles and all the things I like to play mm -hmm. and have played, you know, from rock or funk and R&B to some fusion to some second line to, uh, to you know, everything is is in this record, I feel. And it's um, it's, the, it's the musicians that I like to play with. And we just, you know, create a variety of rhythms, a variety of grooves. And, you know, it's not like a big drumming drummer record, but, um, well, what did you think? Yeah, well, so, I mean, I hear all of those things in this record, all of those things you just mentioned, the different styles. Um, although, like you said, it's not a, it's not a drumming record. Like you're not, um, it's not just a bunch of drum solos. It does definitely feature drums and you do have some, you know, you break out a little bit and little bit. I like that, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, but also just you playing the groove and it's real funky. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was, I was just so impressed. I, the, the first track 48th street, yeah. I thought like, you know, you just came out so strong and mm. featuring Niall Rogers, like yeah. how incredible. It's fun. You know, I, the whole concept of the record was okay. Well, you know, my first record was the Abbey road sessions. Yes. So we went uh, into Studio Two and mm -hmm. did that. That was a couple years back. So this one, I wanted to stay, you know, more local and be in New York. I said, like, the power station is the place where so many things were cut. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my favorite grooves and songs and artists. And so I, I wrote that with, with Niall, you know, in mind. You know, I just, I heard his guitar in my head. I just sat down at the keyboard and started to come up with some changes and, and I reached out to my buddy, Chris Fisher, who's a great keyboard player. And we kind of crafted this, you know, different sections. Um, and I wanted him to do his thing, but he also has a little bit of solo in there as well. But it's a throwback to New York, 48th Street, 70s, you know, groove. You know, it's got a little bit of chic. It's got a little, yes. you know, a little bit of everything in there, you know. And um, it's, it's real funky. Uh, it's funky and it's mm -hmm. it's. um interesting i think i think drummers will will like it i think um not just for the groove but i think they'll they'll appreciate um like the vibe of of what the song is it's not it doesn't get boring because there's like four different sections to the song mm -hmm. you know um yes. and the video for it's pretty cool too uh, we're just kind of i think by the time this we do this the video will probably be out I would Fantastic. think. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and when, when this is released, the video will probably be out and I will link it in the description great. so everyone can check Look it out. Down there. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. and it's it's kind of like a little mini movie, <clears throat> you know, um, mm -hmm. and it's a throwback to what 48th Street used to be. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it, it used to be the hang. It used to be, you know, so many, you know, not just Manny's music and records, you know, rehearsal places or what have you, studios, um, you know, right track was there. Um, so many 
yeah, great. You know, everybody's best to hang. You know, the music mm-hmm. union is on 48th Street, you know, the musicians oh, union. Okay. 48th Street is the hang that that was. And but now it's, you know, it's it's all a lot of condos. Of course, you know, they tur- tore down Manny's and Manny's. all of that and mm-hmm. put up, uh, you know, big uh, hard rock cafe and all that. But it used to be very cool. Like um, my New York people and friends would know um, professional percussion center, you know, mm. Joe Ippolito's place. Um, so it was just a great, great music hang. And so it's sort of an homage to that. So, uh, and getting Niall on there was, um, was, you know, he's just a sweetheart, not just a great player, but just an, an, a legend, but a sweetheart of a guy. And, you know, he's like, well, what, you know, what if I did this here? And then how about if I added a solo? It's like, you do whatever you please, you know, yes. you yeah, just do, do your you, thing. Yep. you know, do your thing. So, and he did. So it was really great working with him to have him That's on there. So, so great. And then, you know, Oz Noy on the album and, um, and John Popper, I was like, Oh, this is super cool. Yeah, it's, it's quite a, it's, it's different, right. You know, like one mm. of the reviews in, in, um, I think it was all about jazz uh, review. He started the first thing saying about about a record that has so many different like sub genres in it. Like mm-hmm. it's very all over the it could be very much all over the place. But this record works because, you know, it's it's different genres, but it's it's all part of the same vibe. So it, it's not it's not like, oh, man, he made a left turn here and a right turn there. He's doing a rock tune. He's doing a funk tune. He's doing, you know, he's doing a weather report tune. It's so. Right. Um, so, you know, in terms of guitar, it's just it's like a guitar <clears throat> like. I rotated guitarists. So, you know, had Niall on this track. Oz is on uh, a couple different tracks. Um, we had a great version of a cover of uh, of Black Cow, mm-hmm. the Steely Dan tune that he really, really sounds great on. And then also we did a great uh, horn arrangement. This is a horn band, by the way, those of you who mm-hmm. haven't heard the record yet. This is basically a horn band, a grooving horn band. And uh, we did a great version of uh, Billy Joel's Big Man on Mulberry Street. Uh, and Oz played on that as well. You know, and, and he, you know, his sound, you know, when you hear it, you go, OK, great. That's Oz, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 it, and, it, and it all fits, you know. So going from, you know, that, so to me, from guitar grade of New York's, you know, Nile Rodgers to the contemporary guitar grade, what, you know, that is Oz Noy, mm-hmm. you yes. know, and then. Yeah. Um, I also have Felicia Collins on the record, uh, and she played on that track with John Popper. So I wrote that one. Uh, the track you're referring to is called Asbury Days. Mm-hmm. So I like to spend some of my days down there in, in Asbury Park. It's not too far from me. And uh, it's just a throwback to like the Southside Johnny vibe, Asbury Jukes, you know. Um, and, you know, Popper's from Jersey, so I just basically messaged his you know people management and said oh yeah he'd be give him a call call. so i gave him a call i said hey you know pat patrillo and this thing goes oh oh okay cool you're jersey yeah yeah whatever what's the track and i sent it to him he goes yeah i'll do it so so and great he just, and he just you know blew on it and, so. and things happen like that right like you just you put it out there and not everything happens the way you want it to but sometimes yeah. it does like that and that's that's incredible yeah, it falls and into place it's all it does and i have to also comment about the look i'm going to hold up the album too oh, the look cool. of this is super cool it Thank just you. the way that you put it together um mm-hmm. i just love the look of the album it looks like old school funky you know Absolutely. just it kind of catches it. your eye and you know it's vinyl we did some cds so you know you can if we have some vinyl left we've sold a bunch to some to record stores and stuff and individuals and i have mm-hmm. a few vinyl left and some cds at patpdrummer.com Pat patpdrummer.com yes that's my website you can and i will link them. I will link that as well. And cool. they can also purchase your last album there as well. The one that you did at yes. Abbey Road. The Abbey Road Sessions. We have a few CDs left. Yep. And then, of course, you can download it on every platform. Um, whatever one that you you feel. There's just so many. Uh, and that's a whole other thing. Like when mm-hmm. the label uploads, okay, we're, we're going digital with this one and this one. And there's Deezer and Dozer and and yeah <laughs> sneezy and dopey and i don't know all of there's so many streaming i have i i lost track so but it, it's out there so i'm sure you'll find it 
Absolutely. Um, for sure. And, you know, I do, I, I want to hear a little bit about, um, the charting of this album too, because I keep seeing posts mm -hmm. and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it's doing really well out there. People it are is. loving it. It is the radio stations, you know, the, the, you learn a lot about how, you know, people are like, Oh, you, you don't, you know, do records anymore. And nobody's mm -hmm. cares about all that stuff, but you know, radio stations, terrestrial and online, they're playing music. So, you know, you gotta, if you have a, a like a record plugger or a, um, you know, a um, person who, or a company that goes and distributes to, to the radio stations and pushes mm -hmm. it and says, here, check it out. So, you know, the, the label, which is Autumn Hill Records has um, put it out there with a, a few different genres, whether it's um, jam band, uh, the relics jam band.com were up there. Number 14 on the top 30. You know, groups like Lettuce right. and stuff like that are in mm -hmm. that category. And then there's a, there's the smooth jazz side, which covers like a lot. This isn't a smooth jazz record, but we have one track. That's a that's just the R&B ballad we covered. Knocks me off my feet, Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. And it's really, you know, it's picked smooth jazz radios, picked that up. So that's in the top 40. So there's, there's a lot of different kinds of charts. Um, Roots Music Report has us debuted at number three. And then I look at the list and it's like the Steve Gadd bands on there and, you know, all these different groups. Like, this is really, really surreal to be in, in this company, you know, yes. like this. I did see that. I saw Steve Gadd's name on there, mm. too. And I was like, oh, it's so cool. It's cool. And, you know, you just and they like that, you know, that charting. I just happened to get a, a Facebook message from this guy and says, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you just debuted this week on this chart mm -hmm. and and like okay great and i sent it to the label and now they're following up and so it's it's just you know in, in today's you know open you know internet world of so many different things you never know where it's going to show up and who's playing it you know it's it's being played a lot you know all over and like some people some stations like more of the fusiony stuff some like the groove stuff mm -hmm. um so it's it really depends there's so many different um records um or radio stations out there so i would advise everybody to if you have even an independent record on your own, if you're not with a label, um, it's worth, you know, getting somebody that can push your music to radio um, because that's how people will get it. Oh, I want to add this to my playlist and then the right. playlist bills and, you know, get it out there somehow. And there's, I want to plug a couple, I think that are really good for people to check out. So if you're an independent artist who's putting out your own record, and you don't necessarily have a label. <clears throat> There's one record promoter company that is I would really recommend. It's called Powderfinger Promotions. It's a weird name, but they're based actually in Massachusetts. Powderfinger Promotions. I totally recommend David. He's a great guy. Um, and he he knows, you know, he, he works with musicians. He works with labels, you know, and he's... He, he doesn't have his hand in, in people's pockets, you know, mm -hmm. I think um, if you obviously have the, the bread to make a record or to make some music, you want it to get heard. And, right. and to get it out there to radio, there's so many different kinds of radio now and, you know, Internet radio and what have you and terrestrial, whether it's NACC, which is the National Association of um, they're like the. Um, the local radios and college radio and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He works to those like stations, right? You know, like, which is like the jam band, you know, the roots music, all that kind of stuff. I right. would totally recommend David. David's really good guy. Powderfinger promotions. I okay, you know, great. Yeah. I'll put it'll a be link very to, helpful. I'll put a link to, um, so that people can find them as well, because that's a really great tip. A lot of people are releasing their own music now, but mm -hmm. having someone to help with that is, sounds essential yeah and it, it, it and it's like today like so even if you don't have a label you really kind of don't need a label if you want to get play then you just need a radio plugger you know mm -hmm. you need to kind of mm -hmm. gonna you know tell the stations hey this is out there give it a spin and then mm -hmm. then people will download your music more and, and get familiar with you you know so there's right. a lot of charts so it's, it seems to be doing well everything but the billboard chart for now but things may change as we it's only been out for two months. So, you know, this is going to be a, you know, yes. a month, monthly 
thing, you know, so. It's so, so exciting. So exciting. And, and there's another exciting thing we need to talk about too, yeah. because you are featured in oh, yes. February's Modern Drummer. Yeah. That, How that, is, I mean, that must just feel hmm. pretty amazing. It feels amazing. And it's, it's, um, listen, you know, um, I'm honored and, and humbled that they would put me on the cover. Um, and I feel as if, um, you know, that kind of thing kind of happens maybe um, organically because of, you know, being longevity is part of it, you know, have being around for so long, but, you know, also having a reason with the record and things like that and things that I've been doing. But I think they were kind of surprised when I, told them that I had never been in the magazine. Wow. I didn't know that either. Yeah, I had never, I had never been in the magazine and, you know, um, it's, it's, it's all right. And, you know, it is what it is. And I just, mm -hmm. just kept, you know, doing what I do. And um, so they um, really just said, let's, let's talk about, let's do it. Let's really talk about not just now what's going on, but you know, how you got to this point, you know, what's, yes. What, what brought you to here, you know, and, and to me, it's just, uh, you know, you choose to be in the industry and, and you want to work, you want to play, you want to teach. It's a little bit of everything that I do. I mean, as you know, very well. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's clinics or, or stuff with Hudson music or, um, um, remote sessions or Broadway stuff that I've done over the years, it's, it's all cumulative process, you know? Yes, um, absolutely. So but that, I mean, it's just, it's so exciting. And I, you know, growing up reading Modern Drummer and seeing, always wanting to know, like, who, who's on the cover this month? Yeah. Like, you know, it's just such an amazing thing. So February Modern yeah. Drummer magazine, yeah. Pat Patrillo on the yes. front. Check yes. it out. Pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> Pretty cool. Very <laughs> surreal. Is. Yes. It is. And and just to go back a little bit, too, and, and talk about your history. You know, we talked a little bit about your, your Abbey Road Sessions album. Um, but, but the Beatles and Ringo in particular are big, big influences for you. And I, yeah, I if you, talk about if you that. were to see my wall right here, you would see one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, six, you would see 16 records from wow. please, please me on Parlophone to introducing the Beatles on VJ to meet the Beatles American version. Uh, so all the way through in order on my wall right here, like, like they were pretty much done by the time I was old enough to play do drums. You know, they were mm -hmm. done as a group. But my older brother um, had all the records. So, mm -hmm. um, and he is older than me by like 15, 16 years. So, like when he got married and left that house, I was like seven, eight, nine ish. And so he had all those records. So, you know, and I, as growing up as a kid, always, you know, would hear him playing them playing them so i just sat and started listening to that that was like my compass of what groove and what music was at that time yes. you know um and once you know my brothers were out of the house i kind of came up as an only kid you know and so mm -hmm. these were like my brothers the beatles were like my you know that was it yeah. for me, you know and my i just family, listened yeah. yeah i just listened to the music a lot you know and again they were pretty much done but at the same time, it was great to go back and listen to the older stuff, you know, sure. and um, and it just Ringo was such a big influence on me. And, and I didn't really even have a kit yet, but I would sit and listen and learn the lyrics and sing along and learn song form and and know what a chorus was and the verse mm -hmm. was. And, and, you know, and just sit there and, you know, on my leg and, you know, and just let the feel sort of absorb into my DNA mm -hmm. as best I that I that. could, <laughs> you know, and just listen. Yes. And then I'd move the record needle back and play that one again, you know, and mm -hmm. play that one. So I did that, you know, there's such a big, and I think of course so many people have over the years and that's why they continue to be so fresh, you know, yes. um, great music, great beats, um, great productions. So they were, you know, Ringo, and, and that was a huge thing for me, you know, and still is, you know, like any new format they put out, I'll get it. If it's a microchip to put in my body, I'll probably get that too. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is, whatever yeah. format. Well, 
A, a couple things. One, one is, um, and I think I've mentioned it on this podcast a couple of times, but the Get Back documentary, mm -hmm. I was like fascinated by. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I didn't, I grew up listening to the Beatles, um, but I was a little bit like, you know, I grew up in the 80s. So there was a whole other thing happening then, a sure. lot of other things happening Absolutely. at that point. Yep, yep. Um, but that being said, you know, I always really appreciated the music, but I never fully understood until I watched that documentary, which I've seen in its entirety twice. And I've seen the last episode three times, but exactly. <laughs> it was, you know, it was like just witnessing the genius that they had mm -hmm. um, was fascinating to me. And yeah. Ringo, um, watching him sit back, for so much of the time and just internalize everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. And then when it was his time, just come out with these parts that when you listen to them on a record, you're like, yeah, that fits. And, and it just kind of fits. But it like when you see yeah. him do it, you know, and you see what he's actually playing, you're like, oh, that's yeah, yeah. Just yeah, not only does that fit, but it's just like very unique. And, and it's unique the way he would lead. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, but in watching that same documentary and saying, wow, okay, right now what he's doing is he's being the perfect bandmate. Yes. He's yes. just sitting there going, okay, yeah. you guys figure it out. And when you're done, I'll, I'll be able to do, you know, I'll just play time. I'll just do this for you. Yeah. You go ahead and do your thing. He mm -hmm. wasn't like trying to be, you know, the guy to, upset the apple cart he let that process happen and and then once the song became something then he would come up with his groove to fit what they were doing and i just it was so evident yeah you know and if it's yeah. just riding on the floor tom it's just riding on the floor tom you know mm -hmm. and um what a lot of people try to figure out with ringo is how does he do the left hand thing well he doesn't really start things with the left hand if you hear a lot he starts a fill with the right but it happens to be on the 16th before mm, so it'd be like and that 16th is the right hand so with, while it's at eighth note his left hand always pretty much stayed on a downbeat or an eighth note right. and his left hand would right hand would be the one that fills in the 16th which is why things sound a little reversed to what mm -hmm. we would normally do right-handed his left hand lead but that little 16th do that do that do that you know that mm -hmm. with that little lilt that he plays with that's the magic that's the secret you know that's the secret yeah. sauce yeah and watching that come you know come into focus in in that documentary was was very eye-opening i wish there was yes. stuff like that for all the records you know yes i i agree mm -hmm. i i would i would watch it over and over again apparently yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> you know like, like um, yeah go ahead yeah, no, I was just going to say, and I, I think the other thing that it, you made me think of when you said you'll consume whatever comes out next, you know, um, I was so impressed that they lent their music to the beat bugs. And I don't know if you saw yeah. that, you yeah. know, the, the kids, kids cartoon, but it was mm -hmm. all Beatles music and the storylines were related and, you know, to the, to the lyrics. And um, I was fascinated. I was just like, this is the smartest thing I yeah, think I've ever generation. seen. Yeah, they're, yes. ins they're ensuring that they're putting that bug into the next generation's head. Yes. And it worked, too. It absolutely mm -hmm. worked. Um, your, I know your, your kids my, listen. my kids were super into it. They know all the Beatles music, Great. you know, and it was it was a thing for a long time. As long as it was on TV, it was you know, mm -hmm. it was a thing. So I thought that was really, really smart. And like, Great. what a lesson in keeping your legacy going. Yeah. Right? And, you know, and that music teaches kids about song form and proper song form and, and all that too. So they get mm -hmm. to hear stuff as opposed to just, you know, sometimes it can just be one long, you know, chorus anymore. Yes. With music. There's really the verses have become like this and it's all just give me the hook. Just give me the hook. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just give me right. the hook. You know, yep. and so it's really good to hear songs develop, you know, but so mm -hmm. like on, on the record, um, I did a cover of It Won't Be Long. Mm -hmm. And my buddy Glenn Burtnick, who's a Jersey guy here, who was in sticks for many years, who I did a lot of his solo records, which happened to be right here on this wall. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, 
you know, he played actually, he played Paul in Beatlemania on Broadway. Oh, wow. Okay. Plays, plays left handed upside down and everything. Like in real life, that's, that's what he does because he's left handed. But um, so he, I thought, I always thought that's, like, that's like song one, record one in the United States on Meet the Beatles, right? So mm -hmm. I always heard that as a really cool way of like to add the horns. We're a horn band, right? So. Mm -hmm. The, that call and response thing with the horn, you know, it won't be long. Yeah. Horns. Yeah. Horns. Yeah. So it's real exciting. You know, it's got that vibe to it. And I kind of, you know, made it a little bit more modern in terms of the groove. And then, you know, um, so that's starting to get pushed a little bit more too on like the Beatles channel and Sirius XM and stuff. So, but oh, I, great. that's my homage to them, you know, gotta have yes. a real tune in there, you know? Yeah. And, the, and he did a great job uh, singing on that song too. That's great. Yeah, so you know, my other influences, you know, like when I tell this, I used to say that in my clinics a lot too, to people, it's like, so like I went from listening to, you know, like and I grew up in a very, very, you know, New Jersey, you know, culturally diverse neighborhood, you know, so I mm -hmm. heard all kinds of music. FM radio was big in the 70s. So I listened to a lot of FM radio and that's why I started hearing a lot more, whether it's, you know, James Brown or, or you know, the Bar Kays or Parliament or then going to, you know, WPLJ and hearing yes or hearing, and you know, like, so I was like, listen to, that. Yeah. <laughs> listen to that. So like, I would, I can remember the day that I literally went from, from listening, you know, and doing my usual Ringo thing to getting on my bike and going and buying my first James Brown eight track. And I went from to from Ringo to Clyde and Jabbo, which I didn't know was Clyde and Jabbo at the time. But, mm -hmm. you know, I got my first eight track, put it in and listened to Hot Pants. And then that was it. I, you know, was, I had learned the shuffle listening to Ringo, too. But then I listened to doing it to death. And now I really know how to shuffle. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I learned the fat backbeat, all that stuff. So, like, they were my teachers. And I, and I, I never really had a teacher, which is another thing people are like get the heck out of here. You're, you're crazy. What do you mean you never had a teacher? I never had a proper drum set teacher. I never went to lessons. Oh. Never. I did not know that. Never studied. Okay. Never. Till I got to college. That was my first real drum set lesson. And mm -hmm. I started studying jazz. But I played since I was eight, right? So, but these were my teachers. The music was my teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of hand technique and stuff like that, my mom, since like, you know, now was like kind of an only kid growing up after mm -hmm. my brothers left, she got me involved in drum corps. She wanted me to do something musically because she saw I had I had a little bit of something, something, I guess. So I did like a local drum corps and then I kind of moved up the ranks in drum corps. I think a lot of people know I did DCI and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I never had a proper drum set teacher. I just played the records. That's it. Wow. Anything I yeah. learned was just listening. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And and it sounds like it was, I was going to ask you about your influences and it, it sounds like it was a, a pretty diverse oh, man. You know, group for sure. When you grew up in Jersey, you listening to, you're listening to everything back then. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. remembers WPLJ, you know, home of rock and WBLS, which is still around the home of, of R&B and, and funk and soul and, you know, um, salsa, you know, you could turn the dial and you're listening to salsa. Anything right. FM radio and, and, and my dad was cool because, you know, um, he got me a um, he knew that, you know, my our old record player was really like messed up. So I remember for Christmas, he got us a nice stereo, you know, and and a nice, nice speaker. So the bass was booming and I just <laughs> FM radio man was it, you know. <laughs> That's so great. That FM radio was it. It was nice and loud and turn up the bass and the treble. Thank you very much. And just listen and just turn the dial and see what I can get into. You know, what's yeah. this? Ooh, that sounds cool. What's that? You know, whatever. That's amazing. Stair Stairway to heaven. You know, all <laughs> whatever yeah. was on the radio is what I played is what I all learned. All the hits, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like a lot of people get into, you know, studying and listening to jazz. I didn't start until later. And my intro to jazz was probably... Well, not probably it was. It was Steve Gadd, you know, mm -hmm. on the Chick Corea record. So it was mm -hmm. really wasn't coming from a straight ahead point of view, but from more from a fusion point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. um listening to and then listening to Return to Forever and all that stuff, and then Lenny White and you know, so 
that's how I started to get into more of that side of things. And in the eighties, listening to him with Al Jarreau, all those great records and then Asia and, you know, so wow. all of those things. So it, it, that's sort of like how everything piggybacked for me, you know, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of my friends in drum corps, especially when, with, with Asia, you know, would be a drum corps practice and we'd go in the, in the back of my buddy's car, whoever, you know, we're on the way home. And of course mm-hmm. in the mid to late seventies or maybe even eighties, everybody had an eight track Yes, in their car. I don't know. Maybe your dad did. I don't know, but yep. <laughs> so we popped in Asia, you know, and then it started to smell really nice in the car, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and Asia comes on and it was like, what the actual heck that I just hear? What yeah. was it? And, and it's like, Steve, get it, Steve, get And then we're hearing these fills. Now, mind you, we're in drum corps right now, right? Yes. We're, we just, you know, we're doing the rudimental thing just like Steve did really, right? Mm-hmm. And we're sitting there, we're going, that's that's a freaking Rattamacue. You hear that? That was a Rattamacue. That's a rat. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. He's backing it up, backing it up. Listen to what he's doing. And, and that's the kind of, that's how we learn the stuff, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like, that's a Rattamacue, Phil. That's, we hear yes. that. That's the, that's the way he played it. And the Absolutely. reason how we knew is because we were working and learning those stickings. So, yes. um, yeah, it's, it was a cool time to kind of come of age, like in that, you know, mid to late seventies, early eighties, your, you know, music was like, phew, yes. was. I, you- that's what I mean. I, f- I feel like so much of music um, was developing at that time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like there was so much new, new stuff. And it was all out. great. It was a yes. lot, lot of great rock bands, a lot of great funk bands. I can name you five, you know, between earth, wind and fire, Ohio players, Sly and the family stone, you know, let's keep going, Prince, whatever. And then yeah. on the rock side, Aerosmith, Journey, Boston, Led Zepp. I mean, let's go. I mean, there's, yeah. there you go. There's yeah. 10 right there yeah. in, in 10 seconds. So mm-hmm. can you do that now? Mm, can you do that <laughs> now? That just like. I know it gets harder and harder. Yeah, but It gets harder and harder. But they're, they're, they're like the blueprint of what, you know. My daughter just, you know, she went to Greta Van Fleet. I was like, yeah, I love Led Zeppelin. Yes. Yeah. You know, I know. They're, like, they're Led Zeppelin. And she hates yeah. when I say that. She hates when oh, I say that. But, but for it's, real, but though. It is, it is really, like, it's refreshing to hear a band like that, though. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, yeah, that's what that's what I know. You know, it feels good. Mm-hmm. It feels I like think it's, I think it's great. It's an homage. I mean, nobody mm-hmm. said anything about Oasis sounding like the Beatles. Right, right. It's, it's, the, it's yeah. if that's what you are about. That's going to come through your music. Same Mm -hmm. way with drumming. Who do you listen to? Like, if you only listen to this kind of thing, that's going to be you. Now, if it's going to be the majority of what you listen to is this, then you need to start listening to some other stuff Mm because we can't on this instrument. There's no there's no fake in it, you know, right? like stylistically true. You have to be like and I tell like people in in lessons and master class or whatever, you can't come from somewhere. Like, unless you've been there. Right. You can't. That's true. I don't right. mean visit it by flying to go to the place. You have to visit it musically. So you got to go there, visit that, live mm-hmm. it, and you're not going to learn it in a day. Right. You're not going to learn it in a month, and you're not going to learn it in six months. Mm-hmm. You'll maybe learn the beat, but you won't, people won't believe you. Right. That's a it's, really good point. You have to put yeah. the time in, right? Explore, understand. Let you it know. absorb experience, mm-hmm. you know. Oh yeah. I know that beat. Yeah. But you're not coming from that same place musically, you know? So you have to live the music. So that's why it's it was like, for me, like, like the Beatles, that's like a lifetime thing. Right. But after a certain point I was hearing all this other music, like I, now I need to visit this more musically. Mm-hmm. And then there was a time that I didn't listen to the Beatles much, but I was so into funk and r&b and parliament funkadelic and all of that stuff and then learning more about that and learning more about booker t and emgs and learning more about sly and the family stone and all that so i was more into that now i would jump back on that tip too i mean i'd be listening to them but i was in that mode and then like we said with with asia and 
Steely Dan and then listening to Gad. Then I got on that side. I said, okay, now I have to live this. So, mm -hmm. and so as a drummer, you have to really do, I think any, any drummer like who does a lot of session work or, or does things for other artists, you, you can relate because they say, all right, can, can you make it sound more like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to know what that sounds like, right? You have to already understand what they're going to be asking for. and not just the beats but the the, the tuning of the drums what mm -hmm. did they use the you style. know the metal snare is it a is it a wood snare is it a deep snare shell mm -hmm. snare is it muffled toms is it open tom all of that stuff you know it's the the vibe of the song you know for sure and i think yeah. we tried to capture that in 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 the record because we did a lot of different i used two different kits so my main kit which you can see here i used which is a ludwig legacy mahogany kit Yes. Um, 18 by 22, 10, 12, uh, 14 mm -hmm. um, with clear Evans uh, EC, um, clear ECs on, on the top. Um, and then I used a smaller kit, a 20 inch kick, uh, downbeat, club date, 13, uh, no, 12, 14. Mm -hmm. But tuned differently, coated heads, thinner heads, more of an open sound, more of a rock sound for like um, Big Man on Mulberry Street, which I have a story about that. Big Man okay. on Mulberry Street um, and the, the more heavier um, tunes we used, I used that. Variety of Zildjian's, of course, the organic ride on a lot of stuff because it's so versatile, as mm -hmm. you know. Yes, and, I do. <laughs> and um, so many different crashes from Karope. I mean... You name it, I used it from Karope to to, to um, K Sweet Crashes to mm -hmm. just some A Customs. Um, the hats I tend to use um, on a lot of stuff. I have 14s and 15s. I used the 14s, but I did a mashup. I, so I use a, um, I think you know this too. I use a 14 A Master Sound bottom and a, and a Karope top, a thin mm -hmm. Karope top. Yes, which is a really unique combination. Like, you know, I don't think I don't think a lot of people play that combination, but I I know what it is, and I and it sounds great, really yeah, great. Thinner top, nice, you know, resonance, but the the, the little thicker bottom with the the master sound, mm -hmm. and then um, fifteen, um, yeah, fifteen. Was it? Um, remember if they're fifteen k. No, they? no, they're actually um, Avidus. Oh, okay. 15 Avidus. And I used, and and then, you know, Paul Francis had made me the ones for the Abbey Road session, the Avidus, which is um, 19 with rivets and a 20. Mm -hmm. So just a variety. And I use that on this record as well. So a variety of Zildjian's, two different Ludwig kits. So we had them set up looking at each other. We were in Studio C. Um, at power station. And so I had them both set up. They were both mic'd. And so on one day I used primarily one kit. The second day I primarily used the other kit. That's great. Yeah. So. That's so great. And you, and you mentioned the organic ride. I just want to mm -hmm. touch on that a little bit because one of the things that you have done mm -hmm. over the years is um, create your sound and, and create a unique sound The that organic ride symbol. So it's a, a 21 inch ride symbol with an unlathed top, yep. really, really beautiful bell. And that came about something that you were hearing. You wanted something that you could crash on, right? But it had great stick definition and a really mm -hmm. nice bell. Uh, and it's a beautiful symbol, super, super thank versatile. You. And thank you for all your help for making it come to fruition. And oh, John to Christopher welcome. as well. Yes. Um, you know, it was in Paul Francis as well. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those things where I was using, I think on one of my Hudson videos, I was using the um, the original um, special dry, mm -hmm. which twenty in a 20, which was really dry. Yes. Couldn't crash it at all. But awesome mm -hmm. bell. Fantastic bell. But I used that primarily because of the definition and just yeah. went to other crashes, what have you. But then... Uh, I loved the, um, the high, what was called the high definition ride. Don't know if they yes. still make it, the Terry Lynn Carrington ride. Beautiful, which is a great way to say it. Great ride, but, um, not as good of a bell, smaller yep. bell. Yep. 
So I just basically asked Paul, can we mash this up in some way? Because I wasn't finding it in any other thing. And I like the 21 size. Mm -hmm. Me too. Just, you know, I just like that. It's right in that, you know, the, the, uh, the sweet ride is a 21. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful ride. Beautiful baby. So yeah. this is just, a, a, you know, you, you really, it's not a crash ride, but you can crash it mm -hmm. and it gets out of the way and um, very good consistent wash not a not a big one but very consistent and you can control it and i'm really happy that sweetwater made it part of their studio package right yes awesome so uh nick over there um really i guess loved the ride and said man you know if you want a studio pack of symbols this is the zildjian studio pack and he made the organic ride the ride to use which oh, was like cool yeah, that is, it is great, great studio ride for sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, you can find that on the Zildjian website or Sweetwater or mm -hmm. pretty much any dealer, but it's a super cool ride symbol. It has, you. you know, the, the look of it is cool and mm -hmm. it comes out unique each one to the next. Yeah, they are. The, yeah, the we finishes. try to keep it in that same range weight wise. Yeah. Then yep. we're working on something a little different. Ooh. This is the little, this is the little brother. Working on a, a 19, 19 yeah. yeah, 19 crash ride. So very cool. Um, a few of those. So we're starting to, yeah, it's a nice compliment to that. So we'll see where that goes. And, you know, cool. that, that took a few years to the organic ride to actually come out and make it yeah. into the, into the world. Yes. And, so, the, and that happens, but it's just, it's really cool as a testament to your, you know, unique sound and being persistent about something that you believed in and, and it really is a great versatile symbol. Thank you. Um, yeah. Another thing that you've done is the the P4 practice pad too. The Super P4 cool. P4 practice pad. Yeah, that took a journey as well. And I happen to have one of those right here as well. There it is. There we the go. Good old P4. You know, that started um, in my brother's basement as an idea right. that I developed when I was teaching at Drummers Collective. I taught there. I was a student there for a bunch of years after college and then started teaching there. And, you know, the one surface pad wasn't enough. I, I kind of dragged another practice pad in front of mine that I was using when I was demonstrating in class. And I flipped it over to the hard surface and I had an, an upper and a lower and I was doing something and I was that that light bulb went off. I said, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> if we cut these in half and we put one on top of the other, we got at least a two surface and then we just started to well, we can make it a three surface. And I started researching rubber and all of this stuff. So, you know, we, we put out, I sold a few on the website, sold a bunch, actually. The rubber is sourced here in Asbury Park, believe it or not. Oh, it's great. And it's a very different ride symbol. It evolved from there to Ludwig. And now Drumeo um, is the sole distributor of P4 practice pad. You can find it anywhere. It's the most yes. unique pad. Around. And if you can, if you can hold it up again too, and just yeah. anyone watching can see the different levels of it. Yeah. So there we go. So it's graduated. Yeah. Um, and then it has the different feel, the different yeah, pattern. One, like the gray one is a little softer, more like a floor tom. This is mm -hmm. more like a ride or a hi hat, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more like a tom. And this is just your basic gum rubber. So it's, you get different sounds. So it makes practice a lot, a lot more fun. And you can work on your coordination and your you're sticking and it's great for like jazz coordination or Latin coordination or yes. it makes it fun. And it's all in, it's just a normal, you know, 12 inch practice pad. It's just, it's yep. op optimized. Exactly. It fits anywhere. Right. I, I used to play on pillows. I used to set up pillows at different levels and stuff. This is way better than that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pillows are cool too. And, you know, talking to Dennis about that chambers as he loves that to me, I never really did the pillows thing. It really gets your, your burn going in your forearms for sure. Yeah. But yes, I like it does. playing on the rebound because I use so much rebound that I feel as if you should use as much rebound as you can. You should 100%. I don't, mm -hmm. yeah, I think playing on pillows is, um, it definitely gets your muscles going. And I, it was more of a necessity thing for me because like I could practice in the living room and not and get quiet. In trouble. Yes. <laughs> hey, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to tell you that um, story of, of um, big man on Mulberry street. Please, so we, yes. <clears throat> we did a great version of that. Uh, great arrangement of it. I always love the tune. Um, it's one of my favorite Billy Joel tunes. And of course, you know, shout out to Liberty DeVito because not only is he a beautiful person and a great guy, but to me, he's like Ringo. He's like the a modern version of Ringo. 
all the great grooves that he came up with over the years for those songs, perfect for the song, absolutely perfect for every great Billy Joel song. Perfect. Right. Groove. It's true. So good. And so shout out to you, Liberty. And, um, speaking to him about doing this it's like man your groove on this the shuffle is so great you know he plays that semi-flat tire shuffle he kind of he plays like that kind of groove you know mm -hmm. so good so you know i said yeah i'm gonna, gonna use that and then i'm gonna do halftime i'm gonna change it up a little bit and then just a good old-fashioned texas shuffle and he goes um so you know we recorded that at, at power station Wow. And I was like, no, I didn't know that. And he says, what room are you in? I said, we're going to be in C. He goes, we would cut that at Studio C. How cool is Not that? Not only that, when I got there and talking to my engineer, and he 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 said, we said, what's next? I said, oh, we're, we're doing this, you know, big man on Mulberry Street cover. He said, you kidding me? I said, no, that's we're doing that next. He says, I was the assistant engineer on that. <laughs> when I was a young pup out of college, he goes and Liberty set up his drums here up on a riser and he was right about where you are right now. So I was like, oh. this is karma. This is amazing. It really, wow. really amazing. So they cut it. at. So to me, that's why the power station sessions is it's like not only having Nile and not only cutting the record there where Liberty was and these great guys from New York and all the great music that was made in New York at that studio. But I ended up in the same room with one of the same engineers cut the same song. So crazy. That's unreal. And I, so I think I always say, you know, there are no coincidences, right? Like that was meant to happen. That's, I think that's, so. And I had no amazing. idea. Had absolutely no idea when he told me that I was like, this is, this is really strange. It's really strange. It great great yeah, story. But it was great. And it was, and, and I was like, man, listen, I hope you enjoy it. And, and, and it's, it's thanks to him that, you know, and all the great drummers of the past that have, you know, laid the foundation, you know, everybody's still learning Steve Smith beats and, and, you know, and everybody and Dennis and, you know, it's just in Gad and, and Garibaldi and everybody. It's just, you know, um, it's such a uh, a great fraternity, but also a very close knit, I think, um, drumming fraternity that we have, you know, always sharing and learning, mm -hmm. you know, from yes. each other and, and, you know, learning. And supporting, and supporting, right? Supporting. supporting each other, help promoting each other. I love yeah. that. Love that. I saw the video of Liberty opening the package and yeah. getting the album. And I was just like, that's yeah. so great. Yeah, he's such so great. A, yeah, man, he's just such a, he's just an icon drummer. And, you know, just the way you are is probably one of the coolest ballads, you yeah, know, it is. It's a and beautiful coolest, song. Coolest parts. And just, you know, when I first heard, I thought it was Gad. Oh my I, gosh. That's so, yeah, I can, I can understand that. I'm going to go so back and listen again. Listen to and it think and about and that. Yeah. I thought it was Gat. And then just such a great, great human and great drummer. So love you, Absolutely. Lib. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Lib. That's amazing. And I, I do want to talk a little bit about your teaching too, because I yeah. know that, you know, besides playing and making these super cool records, you do a lot of teaching. And mm -hmm. when we talk and when we catch up, we catch up between your lessons. And I think that's yeah. so great. Nice. Um, tell us about that. And, and if someone does want to take lessons with you, what, what do they yeah, do? I definitely, thanks for, you know, bringing that up. I always knew because, um, I, I have to say that I, even though I didn't take lessons on drum set myself, but I learned <clears throat> when I learned in school band, I had really good teachers and in a drum mm -hmm. corps, I had really good teachers. And I just love to give back to, and, and, and listen, we all, you know, look at our industry as, yeah, if you, you know, we all don't end up in the red hot chili peppers for 20 years, 25 mm -hmm. years or whatever it is. We all have to do things in the industry um, and stay, you know, so that you can continue to make music. But I always knew I would teach because I went to college for music ed and then I have my teaching degree and I love teaching. I love the philosophy behind teaching. Mm -hmm. I love the inspiration behind teaching. Um, Peter Erskine, I studied with him when I got back from college at his apartment in New York for a couple of years and Frankie Malabé and, and a lot of great, 
people at Drummers Collective. And so it's something that I love to do. So I do a lot of uh, Zoom mm -hmm. now. And if, if there's anything good that came from the pandemic, it's that. So, yeah. but I've been doing that. Plus I have, you know, I'm here in central Jersey. So I get um, people that come up from Philly or from New York, or I have a, a bunch of people that are in this, in the Jersey area. Just hit me up, you know, on, um, on my, you know, patpdrummer.com or send me a message uh, on Instagram, which is also Pat P Drummer. See what I did there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and just, you know, if you want to come up to Jersey, if you're in the area, I have people that come up for like, like a three hour lesson from the Carolina, they'll come up and, wow. and hang and, and then do a three hour lesson and go back. So, so it's anything. And if you're in the area, just would love to hang out and do a lesson. Just let me know. We always two kids going and I'm always playing music and we're playing together. And, you know, I, I do a lot of like, um, you know, grooveology. So I, I, we, you know, we, we talk about not just the Beatles, but we go through the whole James Brown catalog and some Tower Power stuff and, you know, use some of my books from Hudson Music, but just in general, just music, just mm -hmm. like, what what's your bag? Like, what do you do? Okay, what don't you do? Great, we're going to work on that. Right. You know, that's so great. Let's, let's, let's fix that. Let's make that happen. Like, if you're on a gig and or you're going to sit in with somebody and they ask you to play, you know, this great, you know, tune that has a a great shuffle to it what let me see your best shuffle and it's yeah. usually not something that people work on a lot you know so we'll right. go with that whatever i like to work on weaknesses right and i think mm -hmm. that's what like when i was studying with peter erskine i didn't need the things i didn't need he knew what i needed and that's what we worked on yes so that's what i like to do and it's hard because this instrument as you know is very humbling it is you yes know, yes you're it gonna is. Stink, <laughs> you're gonna stink a lot more than you're gonna do good you have right. to fight. You have to just fight through that, you know, fight through it. Right. You'll have those breakthroughs that, you know, give you the confidence to keep going and, yeah. you know, and you um, do it. yeah, so I Absolutely. love to teach. And that's part of what I do in the clinics and stuff. Although a lot of stores are not doing as many clinics, sadly, now as they used to. Yes. Um, but, yeah, that's still a thing that I do as well. And, of course, mm -hmm. put, put some videos out there and, you know, um, just Again, just changing lanes, man. Just, you know. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this year has started off so great for you with, Thank you. Yeah. you know, continuing to promote the album and then the Modern Drummer cover. And um, what do you anticipate for 2023? Um, more uh, singles that are coming out from the record, but I'm actually going to, I had a message the other day from a record label, um, a pretty nice record label. That said, what are you doing for your next project? I said, well, I haven't really thought about it, but I do have a couple of things I've already, you know, kind of been sketching out. And he says, mm -hmm. well, let us know. So um, I'll probably start working on another record um, in the summer because it takes a process. You know, it's it's eight months. It's a, it's time consuming and you have to mm -hmm. book in advance and all that. So I was in contact with this label. So hopefully I'll hear something within the next few days. And it's a pretty, pretty cool label. That's amazing. Uh, and they, they were like, listen, you know, we heard the record and it was recommended by one of the radio promoters. See, mm -hmm. he sent it to this guy who's A&R at this, at this label. They listened to it, got the SoundCloud. And he said, listen, we don't have a drummer on our label and we love what you do and this and that. And so we'll see. So hopefully oh. we'll probably be another record and um, hopefully, well, be, the band will be playing this spring and summer in some festivals. So the, the booking's certain starting to come through with that. And oh, fantastic! But, um, just keep doing it, you know. Keep working the record and the band, and and teaching and playing, and you know, learning it. as I do from others and watching a lot of young great drummers out there. Um, yeah, so it's, just, it's, it's fun. It's, it's an interesting going, time right? we're in. It's a very interesting time we're in, but fun. It is. It is an interesting time. I think things change so fast and, you know, we're all kind of trying to keep up with all the changes all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, but I will link all of everything we've talked about. Basically, I'll put all the links in the YouTube description and in the podcast show notes, because I want to make sure people can find you, follow you, Thank see you. these festivals if they come through their area and purchase the album. Get out there. Yeah. Make Thank the purchase because you. you will be very yes. happy about it. It's a great Thank album. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, it's a labor of love, as anybody knows, that you're putting, you know, music out there. So 
trying to support artists and their music if you can get you know vinyl or you know maybe the cd but like people like vinyl mm -hmm. you know we do have some vinyl left it's fun you know you go into a, into a store a record store there's so many like like we sold a bunch of like you know records to mom and pop record stores that are really booming doing so good great that's so great around the country you know there's one here in new jersey and princeton record exchange they're like a block long you can go in here and find any record you want so Amazing. it's a really it's really cool it's a cool time so thanks yeah. for the support everybody and and um i'll be seeing you out there and thanks sarah it's so great to be on your podcast absolutely thank you so much for being here and i will talk to you very soon i'm sure yeah. Peace and love. Peace and love. Take care. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.